The Wacky World of Multimedia J. Rappers in the neighborhood have forced my hand. I'm keeping the Logitechs. <laughs> I'm curious what kind of potential the subwoofer at 10 inches ported in that thing and 188 watts max, what kind of potential could that have for use as a powered subwoofer to turn on and off when I feel like being extra bassy? <laughs> Yeah, let's just say that the mad rappers with their system have been getting on my nerves a few too many times. Which gets me wondering, I'm normally not a bass nut, but could I possibly have a system with three or four subs going at the same time? Boy, would that make the bass non-directional. <laughs> Another plot twist. On second thought, no, I'm not keeping those Logitechs. <laughs> <laughs> I just hooked them back up and I decided to kilowatt those things, and I found out not only are they rough around the edges and very deserving of the moniker Loud Tech, but they're not very power efficient either. Uh, for example, remember how the home theater in a box is powering the main system, including the newly rewired for passive clip sub, capped out at 40 watts when I cranked things up to about half volume or so on this thing? Uh, keep that number in mind. So, we have the analog extender thingies going all the way out to the back of that with Vibe Trax's Take You loaded in Winamp. This is that pseudo dubstep something or another that has a decent chunk of bass in it. The interesting part, if we remember with the uh, newly rewired Klipsch Passive, is that this thing goes down to 25 Hertz. So, I don't have it cranked really high, but we, of course, we do know it dips down into the 20s. The thing is, that thing over there allegedly stops around 30 hertz or so. So, let's go analog with this thing. Alright. There we go. The amp is now going out to analog. I, only, I don't need both systems at once for this, so I'm being lazy and doing one or the other. So the amp is now, you know, doing the headphone jack thing. <laughs> Now let's go over to the sub and see what it does for bass. Alright, so the song is playing while it's looping over the analog line. So, no power draw so far, but that's because the amp is hard switched off on this thing. Look what happens when I actually turn the thing on. The lights dim a little, and just by turning it on, we go up to 25 watts, or 16 watts, 15 watts, etc. But this is the thing. This kind of power draw, when turned off, is worse than the computer I built in 2005, which is like at 10, 11 watts when it was completely turned off. All this so you can have a soft on switch on the control module. So already, I mean, not looking good. So let's turn this thing on. We got it in stereo, we got some bass coming through it already. I already set this, so uh, no settings, level, um, the subwoofer is maxed, and the surround is all the way down, no center or anything because it's not 5.1, and we're not using any Pro Logic or anything, it's currently in stereo. So anyways, already just by turning it on without even cranking the volume, we're up to 45 watt draw on this thing. So let's crank things up even more. Yeah, this isn't a bassy part of the, oh, there it goes. A lot of air through the port. Definitely some bass, but notice how we're hitting triple digits on the wattage. A hundred plus watts on the electricity side. For 188 going through, yeah, it's a 10 inch speaker, but this is. <laughs> you consider that my main system, turn that off, my main system caps out at 660 watts at 6 ohms for the speakers and sends about 80 to 100 something watts. Uh, the 85 was a conservative estimate that I was reading earlier. 
it sends 80 to 100 something watts to the sub when it's in passive mode. And turning everything on all the way, cranking everything up, we had a hard time getting out of the 40 watt range. <laughs> it's insane! I mean, it's loud tech and, uh, well, cheap, 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 and more cheap. That's what you get for a cheap amp. You do get some bass, though. Come on. Let's turn this all the way up. Oh. I gotta get some test tones. Not much coming out of it. Almost 200 watts. We almost capped out right there. <laughs> yeah, 171, one, so it says 188 watts. Maybe it means 188 watts on the electricity side. Not the sort of thing I want to be running in my system, darn it. Especially when I get some nice neutral bass that goes down to 20 something hertz with that rewired clip sub that's now passive. I bypass the amplifier, it's replacing that horrendous Onkyo poof box, and it's. It, I. <laughs> It's insane. Lots of bass though, but at a very steep price. Let's turn it off. Watch that number. It's, it's almost like a cable box. Well, at least it goes down below 20 watts when it's turned off. But this is rubbish. To be fair though, the Klipsch Pro Medias, the 4.1s, are actually idling at 20 something watts too. So it's, it's, <laughs> ah, this old computer speaker technology, gotta love it. Well, this thing is actually several years newer than the Klipsch 4s. But, uh, yeah, that's why I'm that's why I'm hard switching the amp in this ProMedia 4.1 with the power strip over in the project area and using this for the test setups and things like that. But, let's turn it on. Got some stuff coming out of there. Let's jack the sub all the way. But notice what's not happening. The sub's all the way up. Let's crank the volume. Okay, it can hit triple digits, but it can hit triple digits, but with the sub all the way up, it's slower to up the wattage. Anywho, you know, it actually did get up around 50-ish or so, but that's the thing. The slightest little thing just jumps the watts. Let's switch back to the Logitech. Okay, we're back to the Logitechs again. That's why you're not going to hear any mids or highs, because only the sub's hooked up. 45 watts, turn the volume up a little, get a little bit of bass, just a tad, start approaching the 50 watt mark, crank it all the way, there we go, now we're at 50, 58, that must be the end of the song. So what do we have the sub at that we're getting these kinds of numbers? One notch. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, enough playing with the amplitude. Now let's look at the frequency response of this thing. For my next little experiment, we have the Turd Shiba, as well as the online tone generator that I was testing earlier, uh, that I tested the Klipsch fart machine with earlier. <laughs> the old 4.1s. It's currently spitting out 40 hertz. So, um, the speakers are turned off, of course. Let's see how low it goes, at least before it loses its tone. It's a bigger woofer, 10 inches instead of 8 inches, but does size really matter with this sort of thing? So anyways, we're at 40 hertz, it better play this. If it doesn't, it's total crap, which I know it does, because I've already heard it before. Let's turn this on. Yep, it definitely does 40 hertz alright. Too bad it's got a logarithmic volume control, so you can't really turn it up or down very quickly. It takes a while for the amplifier to catch up. All right, that's that's all set. Let's use the soft off switch for what it was intended for. Let's go down to 30 hertz. This is supposed to be the minimum. This is, of course, where the 4.1s turned into a giant fart machine. So let's do 30 hertz. And let's see if we can keep going past 30. Allegedly, according to the official specs, this thing can't do below 30, but <laughs> we'll see about that. Do, 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 do. I hear something. And I feel something. And there's plenty of port noise where that came from. But it's at boot. Even though there's a ton of stuff coming out the port. <laughs> Need to dry your hands, anyone? We're almost to 200 watts. So let's... And it's shaking the table apart. But it, is, it was playing, but it wasn't anywhere near as loud as, say, something like 35 hertz could get. Let's hit stop on that test tone and put 35 hertz through it. <laughs> What are you running in there, machinery? No. 
<laughs> so we got 35 hertz rolling through this thing now. Let's see, uh, it probably should get, go a lot louder at the same like level on the volume. Oh yeah, I can hear it already. Halfway. Uh, level. Subs all the way up. Three quarters. Alright. That's enough of that. <laughs> oh, it peaked at 200 plus watts before I turned it off. The decimals back are what? We better turn that volume down before we go to the, down even lower. Down, 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 down. Yeah, notice how I just spun the volume like a mofo, and the thing moved on the screen, but it took a while for the amp to actually ratchet down to not shaking the darn room. Okay, now we're going to head for Klipsch territory. So, we, we, 35 hertz, pretty decent. We, it starts having trouble at 30 hertz, so, yeah, that is kind of where it bottoms out. Let's do 25 hertz. So, bigger woofer, can't go as deep, go figure, right? Uh, let's check the volume on the laptop to verify it is maxed out. Yes, it is. Conic synth sound chip. Blah. Anyways, 25 hertz. Let it roll. Let it roll, baby. Something. Okay, no volume. Come on. I don't hear anything. There it goes. Finally. Not making as much noise as it did before. Triple digits, anyone? <laughs> oh, now it's rattling something. It's rattling the cup that's right next to it. It's a woofer excursion. I don't have speakers big enough to really show this much. Port noise. <laughs> you gotta dry your hands. This is where you do it. But it noted it's nowhere near as crazy loud as it was at the higher frequencies. And for what? We maxed this thing out. Well, at least the amp is responding in kind, but still, 139 watts. <laughs> Yep, but this thing actually, despite having a bigger speaker, it actually struggles when you start approaching 30 hertz, just like, I mean, this is 110, this is one 10 inch cone here. That one with two six and a halfs, which technically isn't even a subwoofer, at least turned into a fart machine at 30 hertz. This thing just starts shutting up. Uh, well, that's why we called them loud tech back in the day, because bigger isn't always better. Yeah, this looks like the kind of thing you'd want to put in your truck and put like a thousand watts through. But just because it looks the part doesn't really mean, um, it really... <laughs> so yeah, it does have, I mean, at say 40 hertz and up, it'll shake the place. Especially if you put it in a corner. Usual subwoofer rules apply, but uh, I'm not so sure the triple digit wattage on top of my existing system really justifies this. Okay, we're back to the main system. That thing's on loop, same as it was before. And this time the kilowatt is hooked up to the main system and we're at 41 watts. So for speaker settings, I've got the front two set to large so those woofers can get in on the action. Not the best setting for it. Everything else is set to small. I also wonked out the crossover, or maxed it, I should say, at 200 hertz, which I would absolutely never use under normal circumstances because that's too high. 80 hertz is more like it. Double bass is on, so the large speakers will do bass in addition to sending it to the subwoofer. So there should be quite a bit of wattage going on here. Let's get out of this, and uh, you can hear the get a little bit of bass already without pointing the camera at the thing. Uh, do we need the lights on for this? How's this look? Oh, yeah, we'll go with this. So we're at volume three and forty-two. Let's start turning things up a bit. Now on the audio side of things, I do have some DSP elements in play. The bass is jacked, the treble is all the way down, and the subwoofer is jacked. Center is zero, dynamic EQ, da da da, volume has a little bit of compression going on for the quiet stuff recorded at line level. X bass is like a bass boost for the whole system, turned on, cinema fill, etc, etc, etc. But the point is, this thing is like made to be like a truckish system. And it's at 40 watts to start with. Let's start turning some volume up here. 20. So now we're heading... But look at this, we're dropping back into the 50s. Let's get out of the... Wait for another... Let's restart the song. I don't want four on the floor. There we go. So, all right. There we go. Let's put some... That's a lot of clipping. Okay, so we can hit 100 watts when the subs are going crazy, <laughs> but that's not what I would listen to them at. Instead, doo -doo 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 -doo, put the bass down to zero, 
put everything back to zero because the sound card is doing all the equalizing with its better DAX and the, well not DAX, it doesn't use DAX there, doing the equalizing before encoding on the fly. So keep X bass on because I've used that from time to time. Let's go back to speaker config. Yes, large, small, crossover down to 80 hertz because non-directional only, keep the double bass turned on. Keep the fronts at large instead of turning them down. Actually, let's do 120 hertz because the smaller speakers are Klipsch Pro Medias, which bottomed out at 100, and the crossover in the original Speaks was at 120. Speaks? Yeah. Anyways, I'm sure I'm not the only one who calls them that. So we're neutral now. Everything's flat, which is what I usually have it at. I don't really do much through the hardware. The computer does it quite handily. But X Bass is still on. Let's get some bass going here. And the bass goes away the minute I crank the volume. Start the track over. There we go. Getting some deep stuff. This is half volume. This goes up to 80. So it does hit triple digits sometimes. And then it goes back. But notice how it's, notice how you're at like a hundred watts, maybe. You're not pushing the 200 watt mark. <laughs> so, well, I mean, Onkyo and whatnot, plus the sub is passive. The odds are the sub has less wattage assigned to it by this receiver than that Logitech one does. But with the settings I usually listen to this at, they're like 24. We might hit 50 watts if everything's turned on. 60 that time. Now at night, let's turn the sub off so the front left and right take over the bass. Yeah, lose about 20 watts, hang out in the 40s. So I think that's the real thing with that. As I was doing kind of more RMS type measurements, I said, oh look, it peaked at 100 something. But that's uh, the price you pay as long as you don't blow a breaker. <laughs> We're back to the tone generator again at 30 hertz. The bass is jacked all the way on the subwoofer. 40 watts, let's turn some things up here. You actually hear it as you go up. It's rattling the TV. <laughs> it's definitely rattling some other stuff too. So here we are at half volume, 30 hertz, and 120 watts. <laughs> Anyways, the good news is though, this actually does hit 30. Let's drop it down to 25. Oops. 29.25? Well, that was a nice tweeter test. <laughs> there it goes, rattling stuff again. Well, this time it's rattling the desk. Hmm? That's half volume. It is hitting triple digits. Okay. Well, that'd be woofer excursion in action there. <laughs> well, there's your 80 to 100 something watts. All right, give that thing a rest. That was definitely something in the desk rattling this time because the thing that was rattling loose inside is now out of the device. There we go. Everything's turned off and the volume's back to 24, which is good music volume for me. I'll max it out at 30. Everything's back to neutral and balanced again, and we're hanging out in the 40s and maybe hitting 50 if we're lucky. So yeah, I guess it really depends not on the volume of the bass, I mean it's fun every so often to shake a few things, but also the quality. As we saw with that Logitech, despite the bigger speaker in that thing, or the bigger cone or driver, or whatever you want to call it, it struggled with 30 hertz, whereas the Klipsch box handles it like a champ and goes down into the 20s. See, that's the conundrum that I face when it comes to neutral bass versus what the rap, the mad rappers are doing. Because I hear, and what that is, that's probably the mid bass or something thumping, but I'm not hearing any of the rumbling because it's probably they got the crossover jacked or something like that. They just don't have it tuned very well, and that's why it's annoying. However, you can get some nice deep bass, even from a passive with a, the right box. 
There's actually a, a video that Bear Vids did where he took some four inch woofers, built a box that let those four inchers go down to 25 hertz at respectable volume, and actually fooled one of his buddies, or actually I think it was his brother, with him. But, anyways, I still plan on double subwoofers at some point, but it's not a priority, especially when the Klipsch is a lot more accurate than the Onkyo or the Logitech, or even its 4.1 cousin. Although, if I do a base link, I'm wondering if I should consider... Well, I have to hard switch the amp because it's not as, uh, it's not as efficient as this thing is. Again, turn it off. Down goes the wattage. Because off is actually off on this system. Imagine that! <laughs> as opposed to the soft offs on the Promedia 4.1s and the Logitechs. So... That might be one reason why the computer shop uh, wasn't really interested in these speakers, because those Logitechs, yeah, they're loud, but they're dated. They have analog and toss link in, not a very efficient amp, so to speak. Well, well it does hit 200 watts because it has more amperage to the subwoofer than this, what am I pointing to the computer for, than this thing would. So it's kind of a toss-up. The thing with the Logitech, though, is the bass isn't high-quality bass. It's more like, let's shake the house, ha ha, look what I can do when I put this thing in a corner. Whereas accurate reproduction of the lows going down to a respectable hertz level is more of what the uh, rewired Klipsch can do. And that thing's got a broken amp in it. But here I am playing that old song again. Playing that old song, it's going to the four on the floor part. And I'm hanging out in the 40s. Minimum I put the volume at 15, so... Either way, so it's a toss-up. I still have the original box in styrofoam for those Logitechs, but I don't know. I'm starting to think I'd feel guilty if I ever sold those things because I'm not so sure about the efficiency of them. They didn't have any sats hooked up either, so with the sub cranked all the way, that thing flirted with 200 hertz or 200 hertz. That thing flirted with 200 watts without any other channels hooked up. I wonder what happens if you have satellites hooked up to that sucker. Uh, those are questions that shall remain answered for another day. Either way, the winner tonight is, of course, my little hack job project over there, which I had to rewire earlier because something came loose outside, actually, with the hookup, but not inside. So, yeah, the hack job, win the hack job clips thingy wins this match tonight. <laughs> yes, my desk has a lot of metal parts in it, so that's what was rattling when I took it down to 25 earlier. But the fun part is, I have this system tuned so that you pretty much won't be bothered by my deep bass unless you're stalking me right outside the house. <coughs> unless you're hanging out being nosy and whatnot, you're not going to hear the bass in any way, shape, or form because it's tuned properly. It rattles the living room, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> Which is exactly what I want, because unlike the mad rappers, I want to actually have some consideration for others here. So anyways, it's enough playing with speakers for one night. What to do about those Logitechs? They still look okay, I could polish them up really nice. But uh, yeah, it's they're, they're just a relic of a bygone era from when computer speakers still mattered, graphics cards weren't outputting audio over their HDMI jacks, and sound cards hadn't been reduced to an on-the-fly converter if you wanted to use Toslink and a gaming effects processor, so the, the, the CPU didn't really have to mess with sound too much. Definitely a bygone era, even though that's the late 2000s we're talking about. <laughs> of course, it is the mid-2010s, so boy, time flies. Until next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.